Hey, what's up guys? It's Tobin. Today we're going to do a quick one, and this is going to be on Object Observe. Object Observe is part of ECMAScript 7. It's essentially what it sounds like. You can take a JSON object and observe it, and whenever it changes, you can automatically capture that and fire off events. It's really how data binding in a web browser should work. Data binding in browsers is, right now, is kind of a mess. The frameworks you use, Ember or Angular or one of the other 75 frameworks you're using, hide that from you, but it's still kind of a mess and dirty checking and, and uh, things that just feel a little icky. Object, with Object Observe, you have a JSON object. When it changes, it sees it. And then you can fire off your events. And it is super easy to work with. It just makes sense and uh, you can use it right now. I I'd read about Object Observe before and didn't really think much about it. And then Adi Asmani from Google wrote a big article on HTML5 rocks about it. And I read it and I tried it and it was so awesome. I will probably use that for the rest of time or until something else cooler comes along. So probably I'll use it for the next few weeks. Uh, the thing about HTML5 rocks, by the way, HTML5 rocks, is that that site pisses me off for the following reason. Uh, you'll read like an article and you'll be reading it and you'll be like, ah, oh, this is so awesome. I can think of 10 different ways this is going to save me time. At the very end it'll go, now to use it, all you need to do is download Chrome Canary and select, select uh, eight experimental options in uh, Chrome Flags. Not helpful. Uh, this is one of those cases where HTML5 rocks has this and you can use it right now. Although Object Observe native support in browsers is uh, shit, I mean, it's really just Google Chrome at this point, uh, there's a really good polyfill that makes it work seamlessly across all the browsers, which means it'll use that polyfill if Object Observe isn't there, and if it is there, it just uses the native support. So you, you will never have to change your code as browsers catch on to uh, the new ECMAScript standard. So let's take a look. Andy Asmani is one of those guys, he and uh, the other Google guy, Paul Irish, that if they just both stared at you at the same time, your head would explode like in scanners because they're so smart. Uh, he wrote this really, really long article I suggest you read. I'll put links to all this in the show notes. Uh, talks about every nook and cranny and how it would apply to, uh, say, how you might apply it to Angular or, or some of the other MVC frameworks, some performance testing. It's a really great article I suggest you read. I'm not going to go into nearly that much detail. Uh, by the way, it's also, because it's native, it's really fast. So let's just take a look at how this stuff works. And since I'm in Chrome, and this will only work the way I'm doing it right now, is if you're using Chrome, we can go to any old site and pull up a console, which I've already made big. And let's say we want to make a model or make a, a JSON object. We'll just go var model equals an empty object. Now let's set up an observer for that model. We can just go object.observe. And you don't have to name this model. Uh, function, we're gonna capture any changes to it and a changes variable. Must remember to hit shift enter here, lest I swear. And then we can capture any changes to it. Right now I'm just going to go console.log changes. Actually, that's going to get everything. Why don't we just put in for changes for each. Uh, we'll also pass an index on there if you want. Not really going to use that. All right, and now we'll just go console.log change. 
Does that look right? That seemed to be okay. So now let's see if we go model dot anything test equals hi there. See, we have a watcher for that uh, JSON object. And when we set a value there, said we just added a value. We added it because this model.test didn't exist before. And the name of it was test. Now let's change it. Now you see the type is update. Uh, this object here contains a, well, I'll just show you. That's where you would get like the current value. But we see we get the new value and we also get the old value. So when it changes, you have the old value still there to compare to. Isn't that awesome? Now let's refresh this page and do something a little more complicated. Let's set our model. We'll go back to object observe. And now let's do some fancy stuff here. And this is mostly straight from Addy's article. I say Addy like I know him because I because knowing smart people might make me look smart, but I, I don't know. What property change? Then we can do change that name. We can go must remember to do shift enter. Console.log. Console. <laughs> What was the old value? And that's going to be change dot old value camel case. And we can do console.log. Uh, say, how did it change? In other words, was it added? Delete removed? Was it uh, updated? And we can even get the old value. Let's remember to hit shift enter. Console.log. What was the old value? Oh, no. Where are you What what is the new value? You ask. We'll go this is where is where you have to pull it from that object. So you go change.object. And then you will do change.name. I think that should work if I didn't do a typo somewhere. All right. So now let's do model.test equals what? And see, we've got here the property that changed is test. The old value was undefined because we didn't have an old value. It was added, and the new value is what? Let's change it to what you're doing now we've got the value ch was now it probably changes test the old value was what because we have an old value now it was updated and the new value is what you're doing isn't that cool so imagine if you will we'll go back in here set up a model and set up our observer instead of all this stuff we'll just go say if Change.name equals I just did some GIS stuff. Bang bang! Thank you, Douglas Crawford, for reminding me. And let's do the worst thing any human can ever do, which is an alert. Fire off some yes stuff using. And then we'll put on our new value. Change.object name. What do you think? Typos? Man, I'm on fire today. Okay, so now we'll go model.test. I always type text when I mean test. Equals one. That's not gonna do anything because we're not watching for that. So if we go model dot, I just did some GIS stuff, never named something this, equals 
some coordinates or something. You know, just whatever you're doing there. Now we got an alert saying, now I got this, I'm gonna go do some GIS stuff using some coordinates or something. Isn't that awesome? You've got data that you're watching. Now, how would this work in a real life application? This isn't really real life because it's not deployed, but here's the quality of life dashboard. And, uh, and I show you this because it's slowly eating my entire life. I ripped out all the pub sub from this and now it's all, all object.observe. So let's observe. Suppose I want to change the metric. And this could be me typing, it could be me changing it by changing something in the drop down, it could be something done through the API. I just go model.metric ID equals M1, I think it's population. Now we're looking at population. I can do model.year. We'll go back a year. I, I store the years because they can be different as essentially. Well, it's like an array index. So if there's two years, it'll be zero and one. So we'll go back a year, see the year change. We can do, well, let's go, oh, we can do selected I have as an array. So let's get, let's get, what's this guy? 396, let's get 396. And let's get, uh, let's get that guy, 423. And you want to get another guy? Let's get a guy over here, over a little ways away. 360. Donut. Bam. Bam. See, we just selected those three neighborhoods. You see it updated our graph over here with those values, which will now animate if we change the year or change the... Uh, I don't need to do it up here. I can do it from the command line, huh? change the that and uh, we can also clear out our selected just by passing an empty array so the whole app now is driven by this uh, JSON object object observe lets me just make a change there and I can change it from anywhere I'm doing it from the command line whenever I change the value here all it does is say model.metricID equals that new ID. When I change the year through the slider or through the you know play button, all it does is say model.year equals what the year is supposed to be. When I do a selection, either through the search or through you know just picking stuff, all it does is say model.selected equals whatever that array of stuff is. Actually, what it does there, which is kind of handy, is using an underscore bit to say model.selected equals the current selected it just gets model.selected and then it just merges in anything new in what we just picked which is which is a handy way to go but that is awesome and you're saying but tobin not everyone uses chrome that's all right there's this polyfill uh from jay darling that's not a uh, affectation i have for him that's just what his github handle is uh, as this polyfill, which is like 12K, I think. Huh, look at that memory. Uh, 12K, and that's even unscrunched. That works perfectly. I haven't found a browser where it throws up in yet. So you can use object.observe in everything, and it will just polyfill it if it needs to. So that's it. That's how it's doing object observe. Of course, you can see all that code that the dashboard's using on GitHub. It's basically just uh, sets up our model. Bigger. Sets up our model. And here's where the observer is. I have it at the bottom so uh, JS Hint doesn't scream at me. Um, and any model changes, it just passes over to this function. So when geom's reloaded, I set metric geom equals a geom, it goes and does its stuff. When the metric is loaded, uh, or a metric ID changes, it goes and does its stuff. 
uh, when the year changes, when the selected changes, it's all right here in this, this 100 line JavaScript file is the controller for everything. And you just change that model and uh, it fires everything it needs to fire. Well, that's it. Object Observe is awesome. Uh, check it out. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to Google or, you know, hit me on Twitter or something. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.